the for loop is a very flexible structure that enables us to do a lot of different things. One very powerful way in which we can use a for loop is to combine it with another for loop or indeed another of any other kind of loop. Let's have a look at an example of how this can work. But a good example would be to carry out an automatic times table. This is a very simple example, but let's say we wanted to print out here is x times y and we get the answer x times y. Let's see how we can make this happen by using a pair of for loops. We can set up our variable i at 1 as our starting place. Then we can say that it's got to be less than 6. For the sake of argument, let's only go up to our 5 times tables. But we can take it as far as we wanted. We're going to increase by 1 every time as well. So then within our for loop there, we're going to put in another loop. And we're going to use a different variable name. This is very important. If we put in another for loop with the i variable, every time we got to this line, we'd be resetting the value of i. So we're going to use a different variable name. We're going to impose exactly the same conditions on it, though, and then our block of statements can go in here. It looks like we're just repeating exactly the same thing with the two loops. What we've gained is that we're able to, by creating an inner loop and an outer loop, actually loop our loop as many times as the outer loop determines. So the inner loop is carried out six times. The outer loop is also carried out six times. But for each iteration of the outer loop, the inner loop goes through its process again. So the inner loop actually gets carried out six times, six times. And if, like me, you find simple arithmetic like that a struggle, we can actually use our program to work it out for us. It's a very simple program. Let's move over to our command line and take a look at the response it gives to us. As we can see, each loop is carried out five times. I said six before, that's because I'm used to looking at a zero index loop, in which case the condition always makes use of the highest number, presuming that we're iterating by one each time. However, because we're starting at one, actually the loop only goes five times, because there's not much point to a zero times table. So each of the numbers on the left-hand column, and if we look back at our program here, the numbers on the left are i, the numbers on the right are k. Looking back at the results of our program in our command line, the numbers on the left tend to go in blocks, so we get five lots of three, whereas the numbers on the right count up each time. That's because the numbers on the right are controlled, and by the right I mean this inner column here. The numbers on the right are controlled by the inner loop, so the outer loop moves much slower compared to the inner loop. And the result, of course, is what happens when we combine the results of the two numbers that we're iterating.